Vice President. Um, please join me as we recite the pledge and remain standing for the national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Let's give another hand for our choir. On behalf of the administration, the administration of the Arkansas School, School for Mathematics, Mathematics Sciences and the Arts, our faculty, our staff, and these impressive, impressive students gathered before us, I welcome all of the family and friends here on this spring afternoon to pay tribute to this class of 2019. Before we continue, I would ask that you do what I forgot to do, which is silent your phone. My wife can call me too, she's in the audience, so I don't want to. Today is a day of celebration and reflection. What an amazing year it has been. Looking back over your time and experiences at ASMSA these past two years must bring on a rush of emotions. I'm going to get them right now. Hello. Our students have taken one of the most rigorous curricula offered to any high school student in the nation. They They left the comfort of their home and have established a level of independence. They forged new friendships which grow exponentially in the years to come. All of these experiences have laid the foundation of which these exceptional people can build their lives of meaning, purpose, leadership, and service. Let's give them a hand. Please join me now in welcoming Corey Alderdice, director of ASMSA, to the podium for recognition and introductions of the platform party. Good afternoon, friends, colleagues, and most fall graduates. As we embrace this day of celebration, we can all take a sense of pride in the accomplishments of these outstanding students and their contributions to our community of learning. We'd like to recognize different groups who have been instrumental in the lives of these remarkable graduates. Leading the way for ASMSA are those individuals assembled on the platform. I'll introduce them by groups, and I'd ask that you hold your applause until all members of a group have been recognized. Let me first welcome Dr. Michael Moore, Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University of Arkansas System. He, along with his colleagues throughout the system, as well as the Board of Trustees of the University of Arkansas, have been vital to the work and success of ASMSA. Dr. Moore, we appreciate your attendance today on behalf of the U of A system and its 19 member campuses and programs. Please welcome Dr. Moore. We also welcome members of the ASMSA Board of Visitors. Their support and advocacy play an essential role in strengthening the program, and their counsel suggests ways in which we can grow and improve our work year after year. Mr. Timothy Barnes, Chair. Mr. Todd West, Vice Chair. Mr. Steve Ferris. Mr. Gary Dowdy. Ms. Ann Chu, who is also a Class of 2010 alumna. And our newest member, Dr. Marlene Battle, who is also a class of 1997 alumna. Please welcome our Board of Visitors. Next, it's my honor to recognize members of the ASMSA administration. These ladies and gentlemen give unselfishly of their time and talent for this great program. Members with us this afternoon are Mr. Bob Gregory, Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Rio Morris, Dean of Students, Mrs. Ashley Smith, Director of Finance, and Mrs. Marta Collier Youngblood, Director of Institutional Advancement. Please welcome them. It is fitting that recognition be given to the individuals who have provided outstanding instruction and guidance for these graduates, both in the classroom and as mentors in research and creative expression. Faculty members have been responsible for engaging the minds of these students through the provision of rigorous coursework and interesting, int introducing them to advanced concepts not typically available to high school students. They answer questions while providing a host of new ones to follow. And more importantly, they also give freely of their time and share their personal explorations as mentors in research and artistry. 
The opportunity to study in depth alongside a faculty member is a truly unique component of the ASMSA experience. First, allow me to introduce our department chairs who are among the platform party. Dr. Brian Munson, Chair of the Department of Science. Mr. Walt Levesey, Chair of the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. Dr. Dan Kostopoulos, Chair of the Department of Humanities. And Mr. David Slaymaker, Assistant Dean for Outreach. The conclusion of another year also marks a time of transition for pillars of this community. Retiring and exiting this year are three important members of our community of learning. Since 1995, Dan McEldry has been hundreds of ASMSA students' gateway to exploration of the world through language and culture. Senior Mac, as he's best known on campus, has been at the center of our interdisciplinary efforts in language, humanities, the arts, and other topics since the earliest years of the school and he represents all that our faculty strive to achieve in their practice as educators. Please congratulate Senior Mac at his retirement. Joining our distance education program as a substitute Spanish teacher and over time becoming the heart and soul of ASMSA's outreach, digital learning, and educator development programs, David Slaymaker has demonstrated that the mission and work of ASMSA extends well beyond the residential experience and benefits thousands of students and teachers across the state each and every year. Please join me in thanking Mr. Slaymaker for his service. And finally, this afternoon, we honor Bob Gregory, Dean of Academic Affairs. Though he'll depart next month, Bobby G, as we know him best, his work leaves a lasting legacy for our community of learning. Facilitated transition programs that promote student success, increased student persistence, and new academic opportunities are only a partial measure of his impact on the school. The real hallmark of his leadership, though, has been a commitment to these remarkable young people and helping them to achieve their full potential. Please join me in thanking Dean Gregory. Let us now recognize others who lead the charge in this unique community of learning. At this time, I would ask that all faculty members who are present to please stand so that we may all recognize them and express our appreciation for what they have undertaken and accomplished for these students. Faculty, will you please rise? I'd also like to extend a special word of gratitude to our residence life staff. In attending ASMSA, you have entrusted your children to these dedicated and enthusiastic individuals who surround your students with care and support daily. Would our student life staff please rise? Finally, I'd like to thank our academic affairs, student success, finance, maintenance, public affairs, and outreach staff members for their hard work in not only preparation for today's celebrations, but also their efforts day in and day out. They keep our school running, but most importantly, they serve as the heart and soul of everything that we do. I'm also humbled that we are joined this afternoon by individuals who accepted the challenge of making a vision a reality by fulfilling the call to create what was then the Arkansas School for Mathematics and Sciences. The efforts of our early advocates and trustees ensured a foundation for success was in place that we could all build upon over the next quarter century. With Dr. John Allen, Dr. Ron Hart, Dr. Johnny Roebuck, Skip Rutherford, Beverly Lynn Cook, and Ella Reese, please stand. Next, we recognize individuals who served as pioneers in this experience, our ASMS-A alumni. 
More than 2,500 Arkansans have now shared the bonds of this experience, and we are so happy to have you come home today to join us for these festivities. We enjoy our successes today because you were brave enough to seize and create opportunities that did not yet exist. Would all alumni gather today please rise? Last, though certainly not least of all, I want to recognize a number of people who have played important roles in support of today's graduates. They are the ones who helped these students to seize an opportunity that required substantial thought and sacrifice. They stepped out on faith and the knowledge that this opportunity would be the right place for their students to learn and grow. They have been advocates for ASMSA from day one, and we owe much of the success that is ahead to their support and aid. I'd like all parents and guardians of today's graduates to please stand and remain standing. Parents, guardians. All right, keep standing. Would all grandparents of today's graduates please stand? And finally, would all other relatives and friends of today's graduates, would you please stand up? All right, thank you, and please be seated. In this 25th year, the students of the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts have built on the foundation laid for the program and have excelled in their endeavors both in and out of the classroom. This afternoon, we honor 102 graduating seniors as part of the ASMSA class of 2019. They represent school schools and districts from across the state. They have continued to establish the path that countless classes will follow. They leave our campus today as ambassadors for ASMSA while growing as innovators for this great state. They have been offered just over $13 million in scholarships to continue their studies. How tremendous is that? You'll notice in today's program a section of many individual and group accomplishments from the, that these students have achieved but there's one that I'd like to call special attention to. The class of 2019 has averaged a 30.1 composite ACT score. That's an incredible achievement. As a parent of an alum, we do appreciate those scholarship dollars. The following students have been selected by the senior class to share their reflections on their experiences this year and to look ahead toward the coming days. Our first speaker, Mr. Alex Kay, a graduating senior from Conway, is a graduating senior from Conway. Alex has served as an admissions delegate and has been actively involved in a variety of clubs and organizations. In addition, Alex has served as the president of the Student Government Association this year with diligence and pride. Please welcome him to the podium for his remarks. Hello everyone. Let me just start by saying how proud I am to see all of my graduates here today and how excited I am to be speaking before you today. If you told me just a few years ago that I would be graduating from a super school that's also sort of my home, oh, and I'd be sharing the stage with Hillary Clinton, I, I would urge you to seek immediate medical care. Alas, here we are. It's been a long two years, but we finally made it. I'm not sure I'll be able to outdo the other commencement speakers here today, but as say as my students, students have never been one to back down from a challenge, so here I go. Some of us found out about ASMSA through a letter or a friend or a school visit. Regardless of how it happened, 
we all became hooked on this mythical school that surely we wouldn't be able to get into, right? Well, that never phased us. The odds seemed stacked against us, but we perfected our essays, we submitted our applications, and we spent the next few months uh, refreshing our email accounts and stalking the ASMSA Instagram account. 765 days ago, we received the news that would change our lives, and a few months later, we stepped on the campus as official ASMSA students. We were wide-eyed and had no idea what to expect. Our excitement was always coupled with nervousness. But we threw our stuff in shopping carts, we played unbearable name games, and, miraculously, we acclimated. We formed bonds with each other stronger than we could have ever anticipated. How could students from completely different backgrounds, with completely different resources and goals, away from everyone we ever knew, adjust so well? Then classes began and things started to change. We were used to being Arkansas's best and brightest, so when we failed our first test or pulled our first all-nighter, we thought things were going horribly wrong. I remember vividly hiding my closet in tears as I called a friend from home, feeling certain that I shouldn't be here, that I didn't belong. But then I picked myself up and I looked at everything I'd accomplished and everything I was going to accomplish, and suddenly, things didn't seem that bad. As much as people may try to convince you otherwise, we're not super students who never fail. We've all struggled at one point or another with fitting in, with mental health, or with that one really hard chemistry problem. But we persevered. We made it through the toughest times and the lowest lows, and we became stronger because of it. I look back, and I don't see failure or weakness. I see some of the most fun and rewarding experiences in my life. And when I look at some of the messier, more challenging aspects of my time here, I don't grimace or cringe. I say, dang, I did that. ASMSA isn't perfect. It's not a beacon of excellence or a genius school. Honestly, without us, ASMSA is just a collection of fancy buildings. What makes ASMSA so special are its students. I look out and I see my peers. I see ISA finalists and presidential scholars. I see filmmakers and programmers. I see quantum biologists and enthusiasts and young entrepreneurs. We've lost a few along the way, and we faced obstacles at every turn. But that never stopped us. We came together and we stood up for what we believed in. We were beaten down and challenged at every turn, but we rose up higher than we could have ever imagined. I look out and I see my team members, my study buddies, my inspiration. I see the people who have become my family members despite having completely different backgrounds and completely different goals. I see people who have overcome all of the odds. I see ASMSA. We're not Arkansas's best and brightest because we're smarter than everyone else, because sometimes we're not. We're Arkansas's best and brightest because we had the courage to take a step into the unknown and apply to ASMSA. We had no idea if it would work out, and we had no idea if it was a mistake. But we took that chance, and now we're here. And it is incredible. Today is our last day as students of ASMSA. There will be no more floor announcements played with the guitar, or late night meals concluded with a primal scream. There will be no more swinging paint-filled socks, building haunted houses, or volunteering at science museums. After today, we will all go our separate ways. In August, some of us will remain in Arkansas, though perhaps shuffled around a bit. Some of us will go from one coast to another, exploring big cities or adventuring in small towns. Some of us will journey across the world, learning about new cultures while never forgetting our roots. Regardless of where we go, we will succeed, using the skills ASMSA imparted upon us to improve both ourselves and our communities. So while it is with a heavy heart that I must bid you all adieu, I am excited to see the many things you accomplish. I know however far apart we move, we will always be tethered together by your shared experiences. The extraordinary challenges and the incredible rewards, the unique experiences and the unbreakable family. I'm gonna leave you off a quote that I feel accurately describes what it's like to be an ASMSA student. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruits are sweet. So go forth and reap the rewards that your hard work at ASMSA has provided. You deserve it. Go forth and change the world before looking back and realizing just how far you've come. Thank you. At this time, let me welcome to the stage Ms. Dinah Everton, a graduating senior from Hot Springs, to share remarks. Dinah is an example of all the traits we aspire to see in our students. 
Most folks think of intelligence as a defining trait of an ASMSA student. While each of our students is bright, what defines an exceptional student is their diligence, passion, and commitment to, ex to this experience. Our recipient of our top Humanities Scholars Award, yet, yet a young woman with interests across a myriad of disciplines, it is my pleasure to welcome her to the podium. Hello, everyone. I'm Dinah Everton, and I'm happy to be speaking to you all today as a representative of the ASMSA graduating class of 2019. I can assure you that this day has been long awaited by every last one of my peers. <laughs> this journey has been challenging for all of us, yet despite the trials we have faced in the last two years, we are here today. First and foremost, I wish to extend my congratulations to the graduating class. At our short time at ASMSA, we have grown both as students and as individuals. Many of you likely came here with one goal in mind, and are hopefully exiting with brighter and bolder ambitions. The education we've received here is unmatched in the state of Arkansas. And <laughs> but even so, dropping everything you once knew and coming to ASMSA was a massive leap of faith. Suddenly, you were no longer the smartest person in the room. Suddenly, school was not yet another obligation to merely coast through on the path to success. No, school became an uphill climb, in the snow, both ways. Yet somehow, you all found the fortitude to, to make it to this day. You will make it through other days too and more and more and more until this day and this place and the faces right next to you are just distant memories. So for now, take a moment to look to your left and then to your right. <laughs> it is likely that this is the last time that the class of 2019 will convene in its entirety. Furthermore, I wish to extend my most sincere gratitude to the instructors. Without you, ASMSA would lose what makes it worthwhile. You challenged us, you fatigued us, you even made us wonder if we are meant to be at ASMSA in the first place. But ultimately, speaking from my experience, you inspired us to question our viewpoints, to expand our horizons, and to grow. Because of you, each one of us is leaving as a much different academic and person than who we were when we first arrived. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart, for your understanding and your dedication. You are who make ASMSA the experience that it is. Without the instructors I learned so much from in my time here, I would be directionless. And I know that out of everything ASMSA has to offer, I will miss you all and your classes the most. And to the parents, I thank you as well. Ultimately, ultimately the decision whether or not your child will join the ASMSA family laid in your hands. And you decided to send your child away from home two years premature to a far-flung town. It was not an easy decision. But I hope that sitting here today, you still feel the ASMSA was the right choice. By all means, I wish to avoid cliches, but I can't help but to say the ASMSA changed the course of my development. Even as I stand in front of you all, I'm in disbelief that I made it to this point. At junior orientation, a fellow classmate asked me, after he looked at my mo mobility aids, if I intended to stay here the full two years. I'm relatively certain that this question wouldn't have been directed at me had I been able-bodied, but I wasn't sure of the answer. I was unsure if my disability would allow me to keep in step with the academic rigors of this institution. Each and every single day was a trial, 
but thanks to the support of the faculty of ASMSA and my family, I am here, and I know that my life has been irrevocably changed for the better. My passions have expanded in breadth and depth alike, and these two short years have shown me that I can overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges. And I hope that all, you all have learned something similar as well. My peers, whether you aim to use this education you obtained here in order to become a physician, an engineer, a writer, an artist, an entrepreneur, or anything you can imagine, move forward with purpose. Today, we live in a world that is erratically changing like a dime spinning on its edge. The situation that lies ahead of us may seem more hopelessly grim than ever, but I, for one, have not lost hope. Our generation must change the status quo in order to move forward and face the amassing problems of the near future. Our future. That is no easy burden to bear. But as privileged as we have been to receive this education, we ought to use it for the world's benefit. Use your newfound knowledge to heal, to inform, to make a statement, and to make a, the world a more kinder and more equitable, equitable place for everyone. For now, however, Take a moment to breathe and recover, and then prepare to move boldly and unapologetically into the next chapter of your lives. This world will not wait for you. As quickly as we arrived, we are leaving. Opportunities will do the same, and just as you seize the opportunities, opportunities that ASMSA offered you, apply your unique abilities and seize whatever the world offers. Congratulations, class of 2019. I wish every one of you the absolute best moving forward. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Dinah. Thank you. Students are selected to attend the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts because they have committed to the pursuit of academic excellence and the use of those talents professionally to affect change across Arkansas, our nation, and our greater world. The opportunities our graduates have enjoyed these past two years stem from the investment of the state in the institution, as well as the time of countless individuals we have already recognized today. In this silver anniversary, we are especially honored to have one of the earliest voices who called for the creation of this institution as our commencement speaker. Hillary Rodham Clinton has spent four decades in public service as an advocate, attorney, first lady, U.S. Senator, U.S. Secretary of State, and presidential candidate. Hillary Clinton was born in Chicago, Illinois on October 26, 1947. After graduating from Wellesley College and Yale Law School, she began her lifelong work on behalf of children and families by joining the Children's Defense Fund. In 1974, she moved to Arkansas, where she married Bill Clinton and became a successful attorney while also raising their daughter, Chelsea. As First Lady of the United States from 1993 to 2001, Hillary Clinton championed health care for all Americans and led successful bipartisan efforts to improve the adoption and foster care systems, reduce teen pregnancy, and create the Children's Health Insurance Program. In 2000, Clinton made history as the first First Lady elected to the United States Senate and the first woman elected to statewide office in New York. As senator, she worked across party lines to expand economic opportunity and access to quality, affordable health care. After September 11, 2001, she helped to rebuild New York and provide health care for first responders. In 2007, she began her historic campaign for president, winning 18 million votes and becoming the first woman ever to win a presidential primary or caucus state. In her four years as America's chief diplomat and the president's principal foreign policy advisor, Clinton led the effort to restore America's leadership in the world. She negotiated a ceasefire in Gaza that defended Israel's security and it had headed off another war in the Middle East, mobilized an international coalition to impose crippling sanctions against Iran, and championed human rights around the world as she has her entire career. 
In 2016, Clinton again made history by becoming the first woman nominated for president by a major U.S. political party. As the Democratic candidate for president, she campaigned on a vision of America that is stronger together and an agenda to make our economy work for everyone, not just those at the top, earning the support of nearly 66 million Americans. Hillary Rodham Clinton is the author of seven best-selling books. She and President Clinton reside in New York, have one daughter, Chelsea, and are the proud grandparents of Charlotte and Aiden. With an exceptional legacy on our school, our state, our nation, and the very world, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce her today to offer words of wisdom and inspiration to the class of 2019. Please welcome our commencement speaker, former Secretary of State, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. It is absolutely wonderful for me to be here in this 25th year of this remarkable institution to have already heard from two of your student graduates uh, and to have an opportunity uh, to share a few thoughts about the journeys that you have already made and the ones that lie before you. I am incredibly grateful to you, Corey, for the invitation, for the introduction. I have been wanting to come back and be part of the work here um, for a long time, and it is exciting that I've had this opportunity to come. I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Michael Moore, Vice President for Academic Affairs, the university system, uh, the unique relationship between the university system and this school um, has been, I think, beneficial to both, and I appreciate uh, uh, that support. I want to thank the uh, Board of Visitors Chair, Timothy Barnes, and all of the members. I want to thank Bob Gregory, the Dean of Academic Affairs, uh, and to all the faculty, the staff, the board, and most importantly, I want to thank the families who are here, who. Uh, were introduced and asked to stand, uh, but it gives me uh, a real you know, sense of connection to think about the decision that you all made a couple of years ago to let uh, your young man or young woman leave home early to come here to this school. And so I thank you for taking that leap of faith uh, and sending uh, your students here. But mostly, I want to congratulate the class of 2019 and tell you how excited I am that you are beginning this journey. Uh, both Alex and Dinah referred to the kinds of experiences that you've had here. And of course, as I was preparing to come, I couldn't help but think back to my very first visit to Arkansas, my very first visit to Hot Springs. It was in 1973, I was dating a guy named Bill who adored, adored not only his state, but the city in which he was raised and went to school. And so after we graduated from law school, he invited me to come down to see for myself. He picked me up at the airport in Little Rock and we drove on pretty much the same route that I took this morning as he was giving me uh, a running narrative of everything that had ever happened uh, in this beautiful historic city. And I have to confess that I was already sort of in love with the driver of the car, but I fell hard for Hot Springs in Arkansas. And as I made the trip today, so many memories were flooding my mind. Uh, visiting, of course, his mother's home, and then later uh, she and her husband, Dick Kelly, out on the lake, going swimming and boating on Lake Hamilton, Lake Washita, going to the racetrack, having fun with friends and people who Bill had known his entire life. 
and it was a great first impression. As I thought back about how struck I was when I first came here, I also thought about all of the work that I was privileged to do starting when Bill was elected governor the first time. The story of this school actually even starts before its recorded history, in a way. In 1979, Bill and I decided that we would invite the valedictorians and the salutatorians, and if they weren't designated, the honor graduates from every high school in Arkansas to come to the governor's mansion and spend the afternoon with us. And of course, to bring their parents and other family members. There were so many high schools, it lasted from early in the morning until late, late in the afternoon and early evening. And Bill and I stood in the living room of the governor's mansion and we shook hands with every student going through. And as we met the students, uh, we would ask them, uh, we knew where they were from because they'd been introduced in that way, but we would ask them, so what's next for you? And remember, this was 1979. These were the top students in the entire state. And a lot of them said predictable things. They were going to college. They told us where. Um, but a number of them said, and I will never forget it, I don't know yet. OK, well, you know, sometimes it's hard to make up your mind. So I said, well, why don't you know? He said, well, one young man in particular stuck in my head. He was from a small town in East Arkansas. And when I asked him, what's next for you? He said, I don't know, but I'd really like to be a doctor. I said, that's terrific. I mean, wow, what a wonderful ambition. So what are you thinking about? He goes, well, I don't know because my school didn't offer chemistry. And we only had one biology course, and we didn't have anything beyond algebra. And I went to talk to the university, and they said I'd need to go to another year of high school to see whether I could actually go to the university and maybe pursue my dream of becoming a doctor. And Bill and I just looked at each other, and we thought at that moment, here's a young man who's done everything right. He has worked hard in school. He has been a student leader. He has been, in every way, an absolute ideal. But because he could not test himself against the competition, or even what his own capacity, his talent and hard work would provide, he was facing somewhat of a dead end. Fast forward in 19, the early 1980s, when Bill was reelected governor after losing in 1980, winning again in 1982, the first thing he said was, we are going to really focus our efforts on education. There is nothing more important. And he asked me if I would chair a commission that the legislature established to come up with ideas about what could be done that would give every single young person in Arkansas the chance to live up to his or her own God-given potential. And we traveled across the state. We held meetings in every county. And we heard so much from teachers and administrators from family members and students, from business people who told us about what kind of skills they were hoping to find. And at the end of it, we submitted a report to the legislature, which included about 52 recommendations. Now, in order to implement what was recommended, it was going to require a lot of hard work. And yes, it was going to require a tax increase because 
The funding for our schools at that time was not adequate, and certainly paying our teachers was far from adequate. So we had to make a case that this was important for the future of the state as well as for individual young people and their families. It was a tough case to make. I testified before the state legislature about the commission. Other commission members were deeply involved in spreading the word about what we were trying to achieve. And eventually, the legislature passed a sales tax to fund the kind of construction and curriculum changes that were needed, requiring every school, a high school, to offer chemistry, for example, and also to increase teacher pay. Now, the reason this was so critical is that right before that year, there had been a national expert who came to Arkansas, and he was traveling to different states. This was during President Reagan's administration, evaluating school districts, and he came in with a pretty grim report about the system here. We weren't the only ones by any means, but he was very clear about what we were not providing for our young people. And then a few years later, the Secretary of Education for President Reagan came out with a report which he called a nation at risk. And in that report, he basically said, we are giving up the advantage we have in the minds and ambitions and talents and hearts of our young people. We are not competitive. There are certainly places in every state that provide wonderful education, but on balance that is not being made available. So between the study of our own state plus the national study that President Reagan commissioned, it became clear that we not only had an issue we had to address, but we had an opportunity, an opportunity to begin to leapfrog into that future that is inevitable for us all. It was an exciting time. Corey mentioned the names of some of the people who worked with us to try to come up with ideas about everything that we could think of that might make a difference. And at the top of the list was this school. In large measure, because as I had traveled so much around the state over so many years, and certainly based on Bill's own experiences before and during the time he was governor, we kept meeting a lot of young people who had wanted to study more than they were offered. And the idea of a statewide school for math and science and eventually the arts just struck a chord with all of us. It's a thrill to be here and to have read about all of the accomplishments over the years, to see the alumni stand up, to know that this is an education that is second to none. You know, after all, there are only 15 publicly funded high schools like this one in the entire country. And among them, this school, has the most socioeconomically diverse student body. It has consistently ranked even near the top of the 15 competitors. And it has lit the fire of learning and passion in now nearly 2,600 young people. So I could not be prouder to be here with all of you today. But I want to just add a few words to the excellent remarks that you already heard from your classmates. Because when you're given the opportunity to make a graduation speech, you can't help but think about what it was like when you were sitting out there listening 
to graduation speeches as a 17 or 18 year old all those years ago. And I thought, well, what is it that I would want to hear if I were in those seats instead? Well, here's some advice that I think stands the test of time and I wish I had heard it instead of learned it. First, be brave. Be brave in your life. Be brave in seeking your dreams, whatever they are. Be brave in work and love and service. Be brave as you take on what is not easy and comfortable, what you're not even sure you can do. Be brave and do not worry about being perfect. Perfection is one of the biggest problems that young people encounter today, especially young women. The pressures of social media in which everyone looks perfect, sounds perfect, well, you know that's not the case. You understand that. So don't be tempted to think that if you can't be perfect, you shouldn't try. You shouldn't be expected to be brave because you're perfect because you're in really good company. Nobody is perfect. Instead, focus on being brave. Second, be resilient. Because even if you are brave enough to chase your dreams, you are going to encounter setbacks and disappointments and disillusionment. But remember, being resilient is really what separates people from those who get up and keep going no matter what knocked them down, and those who get overtaken by their fears and stop themselves from moving toward their dreams. I've had a lot of role models in my life. I've been very lucky in that way, but none more so than my mother, who had a difficult life but emerged from it determined to have her own family, to love and cherish her children in the way that she was not loved and cherished. She taught me a lot, but most important of all lessons was to be resilient. You know, there's so much about resilience that I admire. I got a very early lesson from my mother when I was just a little girl. We'd been living in Chicago, and when I was about three, we moved to a town outside, and it was filled with kids. You know, the dads were all World War II vets. The moms were devoted to their homes and their families and giving their children the best that they could give. So there I was at about four in this new neighborhood, and my mother would dress me up every morning, and she would send me out, often with a bow in my hair, to play with the other kids. But the other kids were not interested in playing with me. They would taunt me, they would circle around me, they would bully me, and they would often pull the bow out of my hair and knock me to the ground. This went on for weeks. It was the pattern of my life. My mother would say, yes, you've got to go out and play. Try to make friends. You must go out. I would go out, the same thing would happen, and I would run back in. Finally, one day, she met me at the door, blocked the door, would not let me come back in, and said to me, there is no room for cowards in this house. You go back out there. I thought it was the end of my life. I was so stunned. Much later, she told me she hid behind the drapes in the dining room to watch what happened. Because the only people more stunned than me were the kids who were shocked when I came back out. 
but I didn't know what I was supposed to do once I got out there. The kids, however, decided, okay, she's out, let's give it to her again. And this time they literally formed a circle around me and pushed a little girl who lived across the street, whose big brothers were among the biggest bullies, into the circle with me and then urged us to fight. Remember, like, we're four-year-old girls. So there we are on this tree-lined street, sort of leave it to beaver neighborhood, with all these little kids, you know, trying to, you know, assert themselves against me. Well, I started waving my arms, and by accident, I hit the little girl. She fell over. And all of a sudden, once that happened, I was part of the neighborhood. And that girl became one of my best friends growing up. Well, I don't recommend that. But I do really appreciate my mother, despite her own anxieties, making it clear that I could not retreat. I could not give up. I could not be bullied. And most importantly, she was fond of saying, life is not about what happens to you. It's about what you do with what happens to you. Everybody gets knocked down in life. What matters is whether you get back up. I have now lived long enough to know how profoundly true that is. So be resilient when you're knocked down. And yes, you will be. You probably already have been. But you showed your resilience by being here, staying here, graduating today, and heading out into your next adventure. Third, be kind. You know, Henry James, the great American author of the 19th century, was once asked, what is the secret to life? And here's what he responded. He said, my best advice about how to live a good life is to be kind, be kind, be kind. Now, in today's world, kindness is sometimes seen as soft, somewhat out of fashion, even held in contempt. It's the tough people who get ahead. It's those who just bully forward. Well, I don't believe that in the long run, and I don't think it's any way to live a life, because there is no substitute for kindness. Again, I, I think of my own mother. She had such a life of deprivation and neglect and eventually was sent away by her own parents to live with grandparents in California, and then they too basically kicked her out. So she'd been rejected by the people who are supposed to love, protect, and support you, and ended up working as a housekeeper at the age of 13. And when I realized this, I would ask her, well, how did you survive that? And her answer was this, at critical moments in my life, somebody showed me kindness. She told me about the first grade teacher who, when she would go to school, noticed that my mother never had anything to eat. In those days, back in the 1920s, Kids would bring their lunch from school, they would sit at their desks in the classroom, and they would have their lunch. My mother never had any food. So the teacher noticed that, and without embarrassing her or humiliating her, she said one day, you know, Dorothy, I brought too much food from home. I can't eat it. Would you like it? And from that day through the rest of the year, the teacher would bring an extra sandwich, an extra milk carton for my mother. And the reason she was able to go to school, even though when she graduated from eighth grade, she went to work as a housekeeper and babysitter, is because the woman who's in whose home she was working realized my mother was desperate to go to high school. She loved school. It was one of the great joys of her life to learn and 
to find out what was happening and different subjects that she was fascinated by. And so the woman knew that my mother wanted to continue her education, so she said to her, if you get up early and you do your chores, you could go to high school, but you'll have to come right back to prepare dinner and care for the children. Now, that may sound cruel to some ears, but to my mother, it was a great kindness. So she would get up early, she'd run to high school, she'd attend school, she would run back for four years until she had that graduation that meant the world to her. And finally, be grateful. You know, gratitude is, now we know from scientific studies, a really good way for you to be healthier. To recognize what you're grateful for, to find things to be grateful for, has a discernible positive effect on your mental and physical well-being. And so, I like to think of a phrase I learned about 20 years ago, the discipline of gratitude. You can be disciplined about studying or exercising or what you eat, but if you start practicing the discipline of gratitude, Finding something to be grateful for every day, maybe even more than once a day, whether it's the beauty of the day or the beauty of a friendship or the good luck that you're now graduating, it will help you get through a lot of tough times. Because practicing gratitude challenges you to separate all of the problems that you're encountering all of the challenges, all of the disappointments. It even forces you to kind of think about what you're grateful for on the big world stage. And then it allows you to recenter on what is really important. So I hope as you graduate today and as you go forth from here, that you will be brave and be resilient, be kind and be grateful. I'm very optimistic about the future, even though I know how many huge problems we face. And part of that optimism is because I spend as much time as I can with young people and I am not only reassured, I am thrilled at the ambition, the caring and concern and determination to do something about what faces us here in Arkansas, across America, and around the world that must be tackled together. So I'm proud to be here today. I believe in you. And I know that great, great dreams and opportunities await you. Congratulations and Godspeed. Welcome to the podium, Mr. Timothy Barnes.